greatly appreciate that. Uh, and so, and apologies, guys, for the last minute change. So, uh, I hope God has already addressed that. My name is Nick, and today the topic for the training is uh, Facebook marketing. We're going to be covering quite a lot of aspect about uh, Facebook marketing. I just want to do a check if everybody is able to hear me loud and clear and can also see my screen. Please use the chat window to let me know if you can see my, see my screen and also hear my voice properly. Get a get. All right. Thanks, Anil, for the confirmation. Thank you. All right. Okay. So before I go further and talk about the agenda for today, I'm going to just go ahead and introduce myself first. My name is Nick. That's how I really look like. Okay. I'm a digital marketing enthusiast and uh, have been into this profession, the digital marketing industry precisely for the past 18 years. So I started my career way back in 98 with digital marketing when I was in college. And uh, when it comes down to the training side, been, uh, I've held various professionals in terms of, uh, you know, learning digital marketing skill sets and, uh, on various various fronts, whether it's with the search engine marketing or whether it's with the social media, the search engine optimization and several others. So uh, rather yesterday I was just taking across a, a, you know, a training on programmatic buying, which is pretty much a new thing on how programmatic buying really works. Okay. So in terms of servicing, I've helped more than 1,200 organizations in uh, optimizing their websites. I've helped various small, medium and Fortune 500 clients also with respect to managing their paid campaigns. When it comes down to certification, I've made myself eligible for all the possible certifications in this industry, whether it's with, to do with the Google AdWords analytics, Google e-commerce, Google mobile, Bing certified HubSpot, YouTube certification, and so forth. All right. I had already told you that I've got more than 18 years of experience into this industry. And I'm from the education background. I'm a, I've done my master's in business administration from University of Toronto, Canada. Now, besides doing uh, the training things, I have a full-time role to take care of. I have my own internet marketing agency by the name of Yo Creations. It's called the yocreations.ca. It's based out of Toronto, Canada. So I, I stay in uh, Toronto, Canada for six months and the uh, rest of the six months in a year, I stay in New Delhi, India. I am also a speaker at several universities and colleges, some of those being University of Toronto, Humber College, Toronto, IIT, Kharagpur, IIM, Ahmedabad, and IIM Bangalore. These were the pretty recent ones. I mean, I visited them like just in the month of June and July 2016 and delivered lectures on guest lectures on digital marketing. In case you want to know more about me, you can refer across to my detailed profile. On LinkedIn.com, you can just type in my name, which is Nick Matla on LinkedIn, and you can connect with me over there and check my entire profile and see what my clients talk about me and so forth. Besides uh, delivering training for GoDaddy, I also deliver training for Google. I'm one of the regional trainers for Google, for Microsoft, and for many other corporates besides that. So the agenda for today, we're going to be focusing largely on to Facebook. Now, I know many of you, uh, have tried Facebook for, from the marketing perspective. And if it's not been tried from the marketing side, uh, I'm, I'm very much sure majority of the audience, uh, they do spend a good amount of time on Facebook as a user. When we say as a user, uh, we use it for networking purposes, for connecting across with several people, our friends, families, colleagues, and so forth. So it's a pretty interesting topic. Wherever you will have any questions or doubt, you have the chat window to go ahead and uh, ask across a question. All right, so we'll start with uh, understanding some of the background of Facebook, how Facebook, uh, uh, why Facebook precisely should be used as a marketing platform. What is the reason behind that? How many, uh, what's the user base of Facebook? What kind of uh, audience really use across Facebook? What is their nature in terms of using Facebook? What do they really look for while being on Facebook? And then we'll, we'll talk further more stats. Uh, we'll ha I have a lot of stats to talk about in the beginning stage. 
then we will get on to learning what are the different ways of using Facebook from the marketing perspective. Precisely, it's all about getting started with Facebook pages, which you guys must have seen. Uh, Facebook brand pages are the topmost thing when I mean, it comes down to using Facebook for marketing purposes. Facebook business pages and Facebook advertisement, these are the two major pillars when it comes down to Facebook marketing and advertising. Now, uh, we'll deep dive into the Facebook pages. I'll show live uh, on how do we really create across a Facebook page, what are the different elements of a Facebook page, how do we optimize our Facebook page with right content, with right description, what are the different elements, and how do we really make sure that we're us utilizing all of those elements to the best of the, our ability. Also, we'll understand small little nitty gritties like how do we put across content and schedule content on Facebook pages for future if we want to. And uh, what are the different types of content? How do we really go ahead and increase across our fan base? What are the various tools which are available, paid tools and free tools both, which we as Facebook marketers, which we as marketers or business owners can use it for the purpose of Facebook marketing. Also, uh, one of the greatest uh, thing and one of the interesting thing to look at is going to be the Facebook Edge algorithm. So now, uh, there have been a lot of changes in the entire Facebook's formula of uh, you know, showcasing across the content to its Facebook users and so forth. That's called the algorithm, the Edge algorithm. I'm going to be talking about that and how does a Facebook marketer's uh, roles and responsibility change with that. All right. Absolutely. So the slides, uh, I'm going to share it across once the webinar gets over. I'm going to share across the entire uh, presentation with Gaurav. And uh, uh, you can connect with Gaurav in terms of taking the entire deck. All right. And in the end, we'll definitely uh, going to focus quite a lot on the Facebook advertising where I'll be walking across onto the Facebook uh, advertisement panel, showing you what are the different, uh, different options available across when it comes down to Facebook advertising. So where there are various options available, totally depends upon what sort of objective are we trying to achieve as a marketer. As a marketer, we get across a lot of options when it comes down to Facebook advertising. All right, so let's get started. Any questions so far? Uh, feel free to put that across in the, in the chat window. I would definitely love to have an interactive session, guys. Whenever you have any questions, queries, do not hesitate. Either use the public chat or the private chat, whichever you're comfortable with. Okay, so Facebook marketing, like I said, I've got certain stats to showcase across. So why should we really care about Facebook? All right, so uh, I'm, I've already started recording the session. Right. Yeah, so the session is getting recorded. Yeah. So, Gaurav, you can do it from your end too. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, why should we really care about Facebook? Now, Facebook is the leading online social networking website. As you all know, it's the king of all the social networking websites. The site, as in place, Facebook, claims. All right, guys, there was some trouble here, but uh, I hope everybody can hear, hear me now. Just going to share across the screen. All right, so I was on the slide. We were talking about why should we really care about Facebook. So there are certain stats which shows that Facebook is the leading social network. The site claims for more than 200 million active users. And that's the worldwide. It's an audience twice as the size of the size of a Super Bowl. Now it's more than 50% or 100 million users log in at least once a day. If you talk furthermore in terms of the minutes, more than 4 billion minutes are spent on Facebook each day. So that's quite massive. We all know about that. Now, who are these really people who are onto Facebook? Um, I would say the yeah, majority of the people all across the globe. So it's a different world altogether. Right. Uh, it's been said that if Facebook uh, has to be, Facebook can be a different planet altogether, the, the number of people who are there onto Facebook. So there are more than 
55.7% uh, females and in terms of and males, if we talk about it, it's 42.2% and 2.2% are uh, their gender is not being known across. Some people just prefer not, not mentioning that across when they're making a Facebook profile. The fastest growing demographic for Facebook is 35 years to 54 years, 54 year old demographic, which is experiencing a 276.4% growth rate. The 55 plus uh, demographic is not far behind once with a 194.3% growth rate. And if you talk about the younger lot, which is 25 to 34 year population, it's doubling every month. So what we can really make understand out of this is that it's this entire lot 25 to 34 which is uh, growing at a massive pace now there are the stats uh, these are the stats which we have in terms of the demographics now where exactly from the geographical point of view are they really coming in for 70 percent of the facebook users are outside of united states and in the united states if we talk about precisely it's the largest demographic concentration, which remains the college crowd of 18 to 24 year olds, which is 40.8%. And uh, now if you talk about any further different uh, areas, it's Miami, which is fastest growing metropolitan area. That's why 88.5% at Atlanta, 6.54%, which is the slowest. Now this is from the United States. Uh, now, there are more than 30 million active users currently accessing Facebook via their mobile devices. Now, it's been seen the, from the device perspective, it's the mobile. It's a uh, mobile which is actually growing leaps and bounds. Uh, it's not just the mobile of uh, videos. Uh, it's also most of the social networking and Facebook tops the chart in terms of usage from a mobile device. Now, what are these audience really doing? Uh, well, if we talk about precisely on an average, every single person uh, on an average a single Facebook profile, if we talk about has an on average 120 friends and they more than, there are more than 30 million users. They're updating their statuses at least once each day and more than 6 million users becomes fans of pay, pages each day. Now fans as in the brand pages, if we talk about the fans of the brand pages. More than 850 million photos are uploaded each, each month. I know it's quite a lot of stats. This is just good to know. That talks about how big this uh, uh, social network is. And more than 1 billion pieces of content are being shared each week, which is the web links, news stories, blog posts, notes, photos. So a lot of different sort of medias and a lot of different way of, uh, content, status updates that keeps happening and it's a trap. It's getting the growth rate is massive for all of those more than 2.5 million events are also created across every month and 30 million active user groups have been created since the site has been launched across now let's talk about how do we really build across our presence onto facebook as a marketer as a business owner so there are i have divided all of these uh, this entire process into five major steps the first one is all about getting your presence onto facebook and expanding your network of friends. So this, that is from the personal level, if I talk about. Then it's all about joining and participating in related groups, whatever you wanna go ahead and promote across or your interest level and so forth. And then step three, it's all about monitoring your brand reputation with Facebook. So what people talk about your brand, what do they really think about your brand? It has to, uh, Facebook plays a very vital role in that in forming up uh, and forming up your brand reputation. There's a lot of online reputation management which happens across onto Facebook, where we as marketers can get to know what our customers or what our prospects who can buy across our product talking about us and talking about our competitor. A lot of feedback can be taken across from that. So step four is after that is creating and taking ownership over your company's official public profile, which is the page, precisely the Facebook business page, and then doing a lot of uh, activities with, with, it, with regards to creating a lot of good content, populating that content at right time, at right place to the right set of audience. And also besides the unpaid part, the step five talks about how, promoting across content through the paid ad campaigns to reach out to your desired audience. Now there are several uh, segmentations which are available within the ad 
platform of Facebook, which allows every marketer to pinpoint and laser target so that whatever money is getting spent across into the Facebook marketing, that's all that gives across maximum return on investment or maximum return on marketing investment. All right, so the step one, which is to in the, in the art of influencing friends, having a good amount of network. Facebook is all about making connections with old and new contacts. So it allows everybody to search in for friends, which all of you must have done. Uh, you can search in on the basis of the name. Uh, you can type in the name of a person. Also the high school where they have passed out from or they're in right now. The college, the company they're working for and so forth. Provided the person you are looking for has provided all of these details or any of those details. We can import email contacts also and blast it across to our friends with Facebook. We, uh, we should be good in terms of connecting across with them. And it's a, just, it's a two-way street, right? Friendship. So you should show your friends that you care. Now, all of this is the, I mean, this is the foundation of Facebook. Uh, it's been said that Rome wasn't really built in day one in, one, in just, uh, you know, a day's time. It takes a good amount of time. So it starts with networking. It starts with having good set of people in your friends list and making sure that they're the ones who will populate your content initially. When you do not have a lot of marketing budget, you're not, you're not relying on good amount of, uh, you know, cash to burn out on, then these are the set of properties, these people whom you're going to connect with, they're going to help you in populating your content. And uh, ultimately, the objective is to make it so much viral that it reaches out to a good number of people without spending extra bucks. So you can uh, make, make connections. So if you do not have good amount of, you know, if you do not have bandwidth in your day-to-day -day lifestyle, you can always hire across an intern who can do all that stuff, which is to, you know, connect across with, uh, you know, your prospects, your peers, and comment across on the programs and send birthday wishes, which is absolutely a good thing. It might really look like it's a very uh, common thing, but definitely it it works. It absolutely works. Many people do not recognize the power and they tend to feel that it is uh, a very normal thing to do, but ultimately it has got greater, greater results. All right. So you can challenge them, the, the friends, to uh, various activities which you think they would enjoy across and so forth. Step two is to catering to the special interest via the Facebook groups. Now, Facebook group is another property which Facebook offers besides a Facebook page and a Facebook profile of yours. Facebook profiles is precisely for, for single individual people and Facebook profiles, uh, Facebook pages are for the brands. And Facebook groups are created across by individual people in order to gather across people with similar interest. Now, groups have become a way too popular feature within Facebook with more than 30 million being created. But uh, the point is, it's just not the number. It's also about the activeness and engagement. Uh, almost half of them are active. Very many of them are dead. So it makes a lot of sense to reap in the benefits of the Facebook group by creating a lot of good content and sharing it on a number of occasions and also monitoring the posts which others are posting across. There's a lot of admin related stuff which is to be done across on a regular basis. Totally depend upon how bigger your group is. So if it's a way too bigger group, then it becomes a, a, a totally full-time job to be, and that has needs to be passed on to some good, uh, you know, if you do not have time, somebody who's good with doing the monitoring part. So any Facebook member can start a group Groups can be restricted, they can be closed, they can be secret, and uh, there are approvals required by admin on several stages uh, when it comes down to doing various activities onto Facebook group. These can be, like I said, secret, closed, and open groups also. The secret ones can be undetectable. They're, they're not being traced across precisely. Then comes in the online reputation part, which I talked about. Now, we're we are talking a lot of theoretical stuff over here. I'll definitely get onto the platform and show you everything live on how these things are and what are the various functionalities when it comes down to all of these properties. Step three is managing your online reputation. So your brand image high, very much depends upon the 
kind of conversations which happen across for your brands on various different platforms, whether it being a Facebook page of your own brand or any general Facebook page or any general Facebook group. So groups and profile pages are there in order to in order to uh, uplift your brand or also it can leave, lead to damaging your brand's image also if there are negative comments and people are not happy about something or the other. As you all know, ba bad news is something which always travels faster than the good. So uh, one has to be really cautious about that and online reputation uh, All right, so there was a disconnection. Uh, we were talking about the online reputation. So, all right. Hope it's it's. Uh, you guys can hear me now, right? So companies need to know who's actually who are the influencers who are talking good about your brand, and who are those uh, people who are leading to harnessing and hijacking across of the brand. All right. So that's with step three. Talking about step four, which is creating your company profile, that comes in the, uh, that's the major step when it comes down to pushing across your company's presence and making it appear in front of several prospects of yours. So Facebook public profiles, whether it's of a big, small companies or even celebrities, magicians, uh, service provider, nonprofit organizations, they all rely on having a Facebook company profile. There is no charge. So the best thing is that it is absolutely a free way of getting onto uh, Facebook and showcasing your product. So Facebook doesn't really charge for having a Facebook business uh, or a brand page. Now, all those people who come onto your Facebook fan page and like your fan page, ultimately they are doing an opt in. When we say often, they are going ahead and giving across, they're allowing, they're giving across permission to the brand to send them across any sort of a notification or a message which they want to, to all these fans. Now that is done with the help of putting across Facebook status updates onto Facebook page. And whenever there is a status update on a Facebook business page, it goes onto the news feed section of all those fans. So when I talk about newsfeed, I'm just going on to Facebook and showing you what exactly we mean by newsfeed. Newsfeed is the section where we get to see who all are updating their Facebook profiles, which all Facebook fan pages and Facebook friends of ours, whatever they are coming out. So the home page precisely if I talk about. Let me just show you. All right, so I'm getting on to Facebook. So the very first page, that's the news feed page, just to let you know where I can see what all different friends of mine are doing. So who's checking at, checking in at what page, uh, you know, who's, which all other pages, which I've liked across, what are they updating across? So that's the news feed page. Now, if I, as a personal uh, with my personal profile, I have liked across multiple business pages. All the news feed, all the status updates of those pages are tend to sh be shown across here. But in reality, it doesn't happen like this way. Not every profile who's my friend or not every page which has been liked by me, their status update comes over here. It's only 1%. So they're like, let's say, I've got 5,000 friends, all right? Now, if I've got 5,000 friends, so out of these 4,999, out of these 4,999, only certain limited number of, uh, certain limited number of friends, Facebook status updates will be shown across on my newsfeed. That's what Facebook Edge algorithm is. And the Facebook Edge algorithm says, less than 
less than 1% of your Facebook friends and the Facebook pages which you have liked across, they are, uh, you know, their status updates are being shown across. All right, so I'm moving back to my deck. I'll keep moving back to the Facebook uh, profile and we'll show you the Facebook pages and advertisements and so forth. Now, with the Facebook uh, pages, the challenge is to provide across a compelling reason for people to become fans and remain engaged. If the engagement isn't there, then definitely the uh, fan base will go down and the benefit won't really come in. What are the best practices when we talk about these public profiles? I like I told you that Rome wasn't really built in a day. So building relations do take time. So it's the initial step which one needs to take. Evaluate, learn and scale it up. So Facebook is leading the marketing shift from being monologue to dialogue where a lot of interactivity is being encouraged. Make sure as a marketer, you do listen to your uh, fans who have liked your page, who are commenting across, who are sending you messages onto your page. What are they really talking about? And make sure you are encouraging their participation and replying back. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes which many small, medium, uh, and I have seen it even with the bigger organizations too, that they have become so lazy in terms of responding back to the fans, despite of the fact that the, the fans are not asking very valid questions or very valid comments are there, but still it becomes a duty for the brand if they have come onto this platform it's absolutely uh, one of the best thing, one of the best practice to go ahead and respond back. Otherwise, it's going to harness across your image in the negative fashion. Now, another great thing is to incentivize fans, provides fans with relevant benefits, contest can be taken across and giveaways. So if you as a brand want people to come and visit your fan page again and again, you have to really give them something because it's all about... Uh, answering their question, which is what's there in it for me. Every fan, every particular uh, uh, brand, you know, the person who likes your brand or who's a customer who can be a customer, they need to have a reason for coming back to your fan page. So running across uh -huh. contest and also offering across, uh, offering uh, some freebies, some incentives, uh, is the best technique so it can be anything so let's say uh giving a cash disc uh, a discount voucher giving across uh, i mean can be various things totally depends upon business to business you know you're offering across let's say a uh, domain with free hosting for a month and so forth all the which, which you think your competitor isn't doing but you are offering across and your audience would like it now global brands have fans from throughout the globe so they always need to think globally and act locally. Many bigger brands, they always have different Facebook pages for different uh, countries or different continents altogether. It's precisely for the countries which they create across. One for uh, a country X, another Facebook fan page for a country B, another fan page for a country C and so forth. So that they're able to cater across to their audience even in their local language. Since Facebook allow uh, allows not just English but various different other languages. So, in whichever language the end audience like communicating across, that's been taken across. Now, it also comes down to posting content with global appeal, reaching across local via targeted updates, like I mentioned about having local language being used. And in the end, it makes a lot of sense to push across your content with the help of. Amplify your content with the help of the paid content. So I told you that Facebook Edge algorithm doesn't really let your status update to be shown not more than 1% of your audience. So if I as GoDaddy have got, let's say, 2 million fans right onto my page and I update across uh, my fan page with some status update, now it's not going to go that status update will not go into the new suite section of all those 2 million fans. That is just because Facebook has made it in this way. The edge algorithm says that less than 1% of your audience will get to see. Now, which is that audience which, which will get across the status update seen in their new suite section? It's that audience which has been communicating 
recently way too much with that brand let's say that you know there are like uh, out of 2 million there are like 20000 uh, fans who keep communicating with the uh, godaddy fan page you know they come to keep commenting on their status update on a regular basis or they keep sending them messages on uh, on godaddy's uh, facebook page and so forth all of these which have been highly interactive with the brand have been doing a lot of conversation with the brand's page they are going to be the ones who will get to see this new status update of or which is being posted across onto the brand's page the remaining ones will not get it that's what the age algorithm talks about this is done deliberately by facebook with the objective of earning more facebook ad revenue we have no other option but to amplify our content with the help of the facebook paid content this is one or if you are really hard pressed with having not having a lot of uh, you know marketing budget or a facebook marketing budget then the other way of utilizing the unpaid way is to get across good attractive content which will circulate on its own and become viral on its own now for that very purpose uh, creating across a viral content is something there is no secret recipe for that there is no recipe which anybody knows about that it, it is a lot of creative a lot of creative juice uh, goes behind that and has to think on what will make people share a particular content right perfect a step 5 if we talk about facebook as an ad platform it offers self serve ad system so uh, you do not really need to hire an agency that's one of the best thing because facebook is not that complicated the way uh, you know google's ad platform and so forth are there we will do talk that it's similar to google but from my uh, right so i just want to check how many of you have used across facebook ad platform guys so i want to check uh, the entire out of the entire audience how many of you have used ever so you can let me know with a yes or a no have you used a facebook ad platform you can reply with a yes or a no all right i've got a yes from shivami rajendra rajesh all right is there anybody who has uh, never tried it i have got uh, be saying gupta saying yes all right anyone else who is uh, all right so i believe it, most of uh, most of the participants over here have tried facebook ad platform all right i got someone who okay anybody else who has not used it or who has used it i mean you can go ahead and let me know all right okay i've got a mixed audience now i can see more nos also coming across so okay i've got my content shaped up in a certain fashion that i start from the beginning and do then get deeper into it so uh, perfect Okay, you used it in the past. Okay, okay. So I've got a mixed audience. So uh, good. Thanks for uh, answering, guys. Any questions you have, feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can answer that. Now, Facebook has an ad platform where the pricing mechanism works across very similar to Google, which is on a CPC or a CPM model. Now, if I talk about CPC, it stands for cost per click. Whenever somebody comes and sees across an ad and clicks onto it. then only we as advertiser gets charged for it right that cpc model now facebook does mention the suggested bid so there is a bidding mechanism which works over here the advertiser which bids across the highest gets to gets the maximum number of impressions for their ads uh, for the specific target audience which they have selected for and then if i talk about the other pricing uh, model that's the cpm which is it stands for cost per 1000 impressions so once a ad gets shown across to the end audience that's an impression right so let's say your ad gets shown across 1000 times to different 1000 uh, people then there is a certain price which will get deducted for that so if it's let's say 50 rupees per cpm 50 rupees cpm it means 50 rupees would be deducted from the budget of the advertiser when 1000 times the ad would be shown across it's a bidding system like i told you it does encompasses a step by step approach to facebook ad where one first of all as an advertiser needs to select the objective behind running the facebook ad whether it's to capture leads or to have 
more number of video views or to get across views for uh, their event and so forth and so forth, right? There are several other, or if you're looking at getting a much more number of mobile app installs and so forth. So depending upon the objective, we as advertisers go ahead and select the step one, which is select the objective. And then we go step by step in terms of doing the uh, selection of the audience. Now the audience can be selected, the audience, uh, the audience selection is done on various parameters. Number one being the location. If I, if I have a local business, I have the ability to show my ads only to a certain set of people residing in a certain geographical area. Let, let's say it's a local area. Within two kilometer radius, I want to show my ads to people who are residing within two kilometer radius from the point where my business is, right? Give me an example, I have a restaurant. I can make sure that my, uh, my restaurant's advertisement is shown across only to those people who are residing within the two kilometer radius from where my business is. It's so, so well targeted. With Google, uh, there is no functionality of that. So there is radius targeting over there, but uh, the center point cannot be chosen across by us. In Facebook, we do have the ability. That's one of the biggest advantage with Facebook over Google that we do have the option of selecting the center point for doing the radius targeting from, my, from our side. I can really place across the pin, the center point myself. With Google, it's only the center point of the specific location which Google has got its own standards. Now we can go ahead and target across people on the basis of education also. So let's say for an example, I want to run across an ad which should target only those people who have passed out from University of uh, Toronto, all right? So I'm a pass out, let's say, from that particular university and I want to run across an ad and want to show that, ad, show that ad only to those people who have passed out from specific university or maybe it's from a specific college or from a specific uh, school that is so highly targeted. I do have the ability as an advertiser to make uh, further selections on the basis of relationship status also. Let's say I've got a uh, product which targets only uh, those who have got recently married. Even that sort of targeting. So let's say if I've got, uh, you know, uh, I'm a tour and travel guy and I'm selling across honeymoon packages. I'm, I'm, I want to promote across my honeymoon packages and I know people who have got recently married or who are going to get recently married, who are recent, who, are, who have got recently married, I can go ahead and target them. Or I can target, if I am, let's say, uh, I'm a online retailer into gift stores, I have the ability to go ahead and, I'm just taking examples. So in our case, uh, the relationship status for the domain and the hosting business, uh, I, I don't know that that matters quite much or not. I, I think it doesn't. Uh, the education can really come into consideration if we are looking at from the location point of view, uh, definitely that matters. All right. And then uh, on the basis of age, gender, uh, that can be chosen across. If we feel our business is precisely male dominated, our uh, audience is 90% of the audience or 80% of the audience which buy across products, are male or female, I can go ahead and target according to that. I can even target uh, to show my ads to a certain set of people who are within the age group of this much to this much. Now, all right. Then we have the language from the language point of view. So people who uh, talk, speak certain language who have mentioned the cross in their profile, we can go ahead and target them but I, I don't see much of relevance in many of the businesses, very niche, very niche business who are promoting across certain elements, uh, promoting across certain products, who cater only to certain uh, set of audience which talks or speaks certain language, they can take benefit, they do take benefit out of it. And the very most interesting option is the interest. So are we gonna be seeing it across live? Uh, I'll, I'll do a live, uh, you know, session into how do we really create across Facebook ad, ads and uh, work across onto these each and every section. Now the next, the other one is the interest. So be based on users' personal profile data. You know, if I am a user, 
uh, if I have a Facebook profile of mine and uh, I'm very much interested into gadgets. I, I keep reading about gadgets. I've, got, I've liked pages which are related to gadgets. So then iPhone 7, Apple can actually go ahead and choose across from the interest option. People who are interested in gadgets, into electronics, or into technology. When they go ahead and show, I being one of their uh, prospect can be shown across. So on the basis of interest, there are very various different interest options available across. So in our sort of an, uh, business, we do have an option of selecting across uh, from the interest hosting, web, web, uh, web marketing, web properties, and so forth. So people who are into uh, that sort of interest, we can ta target them, or we can target uh, small, small scale medium businesses who are always looking for buying a new domain or a new hosting and so forth. So from the interest level, we, we can target that. And then we have social ads where we leverage the news feeds. We've spoken about this. It's the same advertisements only. Engagement ads are there, which bring social actions directly. So when I talk about the engagement ads, these are precisely the news feed ads. Now there are two types of ads precisely if we talk about. One is the right-hand side ads and the other one is the news feed ads. It's only the location which differs across. I hope uh, all those who have tried all those who have tried this part, uh, Facebook ads, they would be knowing about it. Let me just go ahead and share my Facebook profile thing, just to let you know. So this is uh, the difference between the right inside ad and also the newsfeed ad. So if you can see this particular ad, which comes onto the right hand side, either I'm onto the newsfeed page, so I'm, onto, I'm in the newsfeed page, right? On the right hand side, the advertisements which are coming across, underneath the sponsored with the picture, with the uh, headline and also the some text around it. That's the right hand side ad. And there are different sort of an ads, which is newsfeed ad, which comes in in between, in between the news feeds. They very much appear like as if somebody has written across some content and it's not an advertisement. So they, the overall conversion ratio, if I talk about, is much better of the newsfeed ads. We'll see how do we really create these. All right. Now I'm going to talk about before we. So in the second half we will do the live session. Before the, before that before the break we're going to talk a lot of uh, theoretical talk. You know theoretical stuff. So some more theoretical stuff. Maybe talking about some of the common biggest marketing Facebook marketing mistakes that businesses are making. Now, like I did ask you a question that how many of you have actually, you know, used it across people. Many people complain that they have tried and failed. They have tried Facebook ads, but they have actually failed it. Uh, so it doesn't really make sense to just go ahead and stop using it. Uh, if there can be several reasons behind not getting that, uh, getting, you know, much benefit out of Facebook ads. Either the message was not clear. The landing page wasn't really up to the mark. So as a marketer, we have to make sure that the landing page also talks the same language. It's mobile responsive and also tablet responsive. And it's talking the same language and has got some uh, clear call to action. Some incentivization is there in the advertisement and also uh, in the landing page, which makes the end user take an action, right? Or maybe the, the other reason for not Facebook ads not working well is that the audience which is used across is not targeted. Now, just like other advertisement platforms, there's a lot of hit and trial involved over here as well. There's a lot of learning which is needed across. So you cannot really say that the very first time you create across an ads and you are expecting for results and, ad, and the results should start pouring in from day one. No, it has to be a lot of uh, changes which one needs to do and see which particular option works the best? Is it the change in the ad copy? Is it a change in the image? Is it a different landing page? Is it a different uh, audience? Which, uh, which one out of all of these works well? So which one fits with which particular power portion? There are a lot of, lot of parameters. We, we have to really uh, do a lot of uh, permutation and combination and see which particular combination works the best and gives us the right recipe. So the right recipe 
in terms of getting that across, we have to work around that. So the key is education. Key is learning that across and hit and try, I would say. Right? So the other major forms of Facebook mistakes, besides the not, not using Facebook advertisements any further, is not to respond to fan posts. Many people uh, make this mistake. They, they take it so lightly. I do talk about that. If you have a fa Facebook fan page, as a business owner, you tend to lower down the priority. The priority of a Facebook page, it goes down uh, till the time you've, you have a notion in your mind that Facebook is, uh, you know, is not so good or you don't really know whether it will be good for your business or not. Till the time you do not really use it to the maximum potential and give it a better try, you won't be able to get to know about it. So you have to really make changes in your priorities and uh, put in across good amount of effort. If you're not able to do it, probably you hire across somebody who can devote time into the activity, respond back to your fans, put in across good amount of content and uh, run advertisements and so forth. I mean, it totally depends how, how much occupied you are and how much time can you give across. If you uh, have got time, but it's just the adjustment of the priorities, make sure you do that. Your posts have, it should not be, <coughs> excuse me. Make sure your Facebook posts are not just into, uh, are not just sounding like a uh, sales copy or an ad copy. And they need to be much more educative and uh, should propel the end audience to click onto it. If you're talking way too much promotional stuff, it might put off the audience. So there's a lot of uh, you know, experimentation again involved with that. Every particular business audience have got different tastes and preferences. So we cannot really see uh, that it would hold true for every sort of a business. For various businesses, different audiences are there and every different audience has got their own tastes and preferences. Also, many people, what they do, they use across only one single form of advertisements, which is the boost button. I hope many of you who have tried the Facebook advertisements, you must have seen the Facebook boost option. I'll show you when we'll you know, get onto that. Also, promoting posts without a measurable ROI it's absolutely of no use. So I have a question for you. What do you think is the best metric to use uh, while, when it comes down to understanding or measuring the performance? Understanding the performance or measuring the performance. So I, I repeat the question again. When it comes down to measuring the performance of your Facebook ads, what metric do you think should be used across? All right, so I've got uh, Anand who says, uh, it, uh, I think it's conversion. All right, anybody else who wants to answer that across? Thanks, Anand. So what sort of a metric should be used across, all right, uh, and say also the user engagement precisely? Anybody else who uh, wants to put in across any comments onto that? What metric should one be using across while measuring the performance of a Facebook ad campaign? Well, conversions, absolutely right. Conversions, user engagements, the number of likes, you know, which have been got across the reach, how many people have seen your page and so forth, many other things. And these are various different matrices. I hope you would agree to that. Now the definition of conversions differ from campaign to campaign. In one single campaign, the definition of conversion can be the number of leads which have got across. I've got Gajendra who talks about ads relevancy, absolutely. That is another one which one can really go ahead and check and measure, right? How do we really track conversions? Absolutely, I'll show you across. So there is a way of putting across a Facebook pixel code which we do that across on the thank you page. Now, when it comes down to understanding how many conversions have really come in across with the help of the Facebook post, we can do that across by implementing a certain code which Facebook gives us across. That's called Facebook pixel code, 
that code has to be put in within the code of the website code the web page code of the thank you page the page which opens up after a certain action has been taken across let's say you got a e-commerce website right where transaction happens and you're looking at sales your conversion definition is sales on your website so with that uh, the thank you payment page once the payment has been done by a visitor the thank you page opens up in that thank you page that pixel code has to be inserted i'll show you how do we do that all right as we move further the other common mistake is uh, so like it's not having any matrix to measure across the performance another market, major facebook mistake is targeting the wrong audience i spoke about that or not having enough budget for ads so till the time you do not uh, you know put across a certain section of your marketing budget for facebook by marketing uh, you won't be able to try and test it out the power of facebook all right one needs to have clear objectives what exactly are you trying to do are you trying to look for selling across a product or offer across uh, Furthermore, so what is more important for you? Are you looking at uh, brand awareness, putting across, you know, you want to lead the entire product category of yours, or uh, you want to push more of your sales and marketing and so forth? All right, one second. All right, so I was using across. Uh, one second, all right. So I was on to this slide. So, you know, Facebook ads, the top Facebook marketing mistakes, if we talk about, I'm just repeating, uh, you know, going back to the same slides as I was sharing across this wrong screen. So the top Facebook marketing mistakes, which I talked about is not having, uh, you know, not trying it for long enough and not having clear message, confusing landing page or putting across, uh, you know, wrong target audience and so forth. So the key is education, right? You do need to educate yourself or, or do put in across a lot of experimentation and so forth. All right. Facebook mistakes, if we talk about, I've spoken about that, not responding back to your fans and also having advertisements, uh, you know, having message, which is precisely more about, uh, you know, any promotional stuff and so forth. When you're not putting across a lot of effort in having engaging content or content which will help you in giving across more engagement, that can lead to uh, that can lead to poor performance of your campaign. You can also, if you're only just using across the boost button, you're promoting post with a non-measurable. Uh, Matrix and so forth. If you do not have a matrix to measure across your performance, you're using the wrong audience, targeting the wrong audience, or you do not have budgets for your ads. All right, we spoke about having clear objectives. What exactly are you trying to sell across and so forth? So what is more important? Is it more important to push across your sales and marketing tactic, your pro, more of your product you want to lead in your entire industry and so forth? So of the examples of the objectives that we talk about, Number one is to drive traffic to your website. Many people are just looking at getting traffic from the Facebook ads, or you're looking at increasing online sales. You're looking at launching a new product. If you are looking at launching a new product, then you want more awareness and so forth. Or you're looking at building your email list and so forth, right? Now for now every channel, every digital marketing channel works hand in hand. We cannot really say that uh, we are just good with Facebook advertisements and we do not need help of any other digital marketing channel, whether it's to do with search engine optimization or whether it's to do with the Facebook ads and so forth. I hope you guys would agree that all of them really works as a building block. How would you uh, perform if as a, as a, just a normal internet user, if I talk about, would you really go ahead and buy across a product uh, after seeing its advertisement the very first time on a Facebook on a Facebook right inside ad so on the very first day would you buy across a product 
All right, so Anand says it totally depends upon how the presentations have been done. Absolutely, I totally agree. In many of the scenarios, uh, it's not the single call, single conversation with the product which gets across the conversions, right? And you're absolutely right, like you said. First impression is sometimes worth lots, but yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we have to really keep into mind various different aspects into consideration. Whether, uh, so the first interaction is definitely the first impression is the most important one. And since every single marketing channel is a building block, so we have to make sure that we do not just solely depend upon Facebook as one, but that same audience who have seen across our Facebook ad might not buy it on the very first stage. On the second day or on the third day, that same user might get to see across our advertisement on a Google, uh, you know, Google search ad. And then again, he jumps onto our website and doesn't buy it even in the second stage. Then same user might get to see that same brand's message or an advertisement on a, let's say on a banner ad, you know, the third or the fourth time and so forth. Now, all of that is collating and bringing across, building across an image of the brand into the mind of the customer the prospect precisely. That prospect turns into a customer when that entire image gets built up and the entire decision making in the entire decision making process, this particular brand wins over the other competitor brands. So it makes a lot of sense to always gel well each and every channel in a certain fashion that it helps you to get across conversions at the end of the day. Right? So it's never bad it's not bad to just use across one single uh, method, digital marketing channel or a method for, let's say, for an awareness purpose. Many people say, why do we really focus more on the awareness? Why not we just focus more on the conversion? Well, till the time awareness doesn't happen, the brand building doesn't happen, the uh, conversion won't really come up. So all of those are an important phenomena in the entire entire. Uh, sales process which happens across. Now other uh, objectives which various marketers can really take into consideration when it comes down to Facebook ads is to improve customer service. When you're looking at making people, uh, making people's life uh, better with your product, you always want to deliver across better customer service. You want to reply back to them with the help of your Facebook marketing efforts. Many, uh, I mean you must have seen and you guys must have really uh, done in your real time, real life scenarios also. Whenever you have got some problem with a particular brand, the best way is not to just go ahead and call up their customer care, but is to just go ahead and uh, put it across onto the Facebook page or mention or uh, tweet about that brand and or, you know mention that brands into your tweet and so forth. Have you guys ever performed certain kind of an action and have you seen any repercussions in that when you are not happy with a certain brand or a certain product you have instead of going ahead and calling up their customer service over the phone or maybe writing an email you've gone ahead and taken help of their facebook business page or their twitter account or any other social media account any of you who have done that across anyone right urban says yes done that across right so this actually shows that how, uh, how much finicky brands are today with respect to their image onto these social networking websites. Also the other objectives besides the improving awareness and improving the reputation, it can be to drive in store sales. So many, many organizations, many brands just run across Facebook ads for getting across customers into their store so you can offer across let's say discount coupons which can only be redeemed across within the store so you can run contests and so forth within the facebook page where the engagement happens on the online platform but the actual end objective the actual uh, measurement happens in terms of how many people come onto the scum or uh, come within the store and buy the buy the product all right All right, so one second. All right. And then we have, uh, we can have 
get more check-ins also. So if we are looking at, uh, you know, getting across more check-ins, that's another thing. So uh, I can go ahead and uh, share across one of, so many, many brands do that across in terms of, uh, you know, getting your customers writing reviews for you or many uh, brands do try to look at at getting much more check-ins so that the brand gets populated across on several Facebook profiles and so forth. So there was this restaurant where I went to and it did ask me, you know, when we, once we were done with their entire meal, they did say that if you go ahead and check in onto your Facebook page that you are here in this restaurant. So that was a pretty new restaurant. They were looking at brand awareness. So for brand awareness purpose, they want, they were encouraging people to do the check-in from their Facebook profile. And once they are done, they asked to uh, show us our smartphones uh, to the managers. And if they verify that, yes, that's been done, they were giving 10% discount. So that's something which is incentivizing the existing customers to go ahead and do the check-in. And ultimately, a check-in done by their customers are helping in populating the brand so forth within the friends of with the Facebook friends of those people who have did who have done the check-in. All right. So that's with the example objectives. Now, talking furthermore about some other power tips on Facebook. So it's all about creating good content. So content is the king, as we all know. Without great content, we cannot really make any digital marketing activity or any even offline marketing activity stand out and perform to its best. So what exactly we need to be really careful when we talk, when we are looking at having uh, great content, it has to be contextual advertised, uh, contextual, right? It's, so there are three major content buckets which one needs to focus uh, while, while creating a first content for Facebook pages. The number one from the information perspective, if you want to inform people about any new promotional aspect, any new, uh, you know, any new product which you have come up with and so forth. So from the information then to entertain. Now many organizations uh, use the humor part and that is something which works the best. You know, humor is one thing which entertains majority of the audience provided uh, and many B2B brands also do it. Despite of the fact that B2B is more of a serious affair, they still use the humor side so that the engagement aspect comes in with the help of entertainment and then also do not forget to have a call to action uh, content within uh, call to action you know within your entire content when i say call to action it can be like uh, click here to get across 20 percent discount or check in now to get this much i mean you're asking asking your readers to go ahead and take an action click somewhere or the other and then take an action. Ultimately, you want your audience to take an action so that your marketing objective gets made across. Are right, talking furthermore on to some more engagement tips? So number one is the shareability part. So create across content that with your audience while keeping across your audience in mind. Your audience taste and preferences should be known across. That is, that, that is known across when you do a lot of probing with your end audience, your end audience interest, likes, taste, preferences, all should be known across on the basis of that the content should be created so that there are more number of shares which happens across. Also prompt response, like I told you, if you are looking at going here, uh, you know, getting more engagement part, make sure that you're replying back to your audience, whosoever is typing in across within the, Facebook page and so forth. And the other one is to personalize posts. Now that's very important. The tone, the manner in which you are promoting across your post, that needs to be personalized. So writing as I, we is something uh, which is preferable across. Whenever you, whenever it's appropriate, make sure uh, these wordings should be used across and the post should be personalized. You can address across the uh, address across those people who have commented onto your page with their first name. That makes sense. Or you can tag them across 
that's also the best thing to do so that they get notified uh, whenever you have written across your reply addressing them. Moderators who are taking care of the entire Facebook page or the Facebook group should sign off with their first name and they should be friendly. Uh, they, they should not be way too harsh upon uh, in terms of all the various rules and regulation. For an example, uh, you cannot really put across a lot of restrictions in terms of what to post, what not to post. You can be a bit relaxed under that till the time it's not affecting the entire group. So everyone's interest has to be taken, keep kept into consideration. Now humor, like I told you, point number seven, that is something which uh, works as uh, for the majority of the audience if it's being done tastefully in a perfect fashion. Another one, another great engagement tip, point number eight, is to monitor other Facebook pages also. Now, it's not just your lot of experimentation which will help you to get across uh, understanding of how things are working and which one works the best and which one doesn't. It also uh, comes down, boils down to monitoring your Facebook page. page. Monitoring others uh, um, along with yours, monitor others' Facebook page, business page, which is your competitors. You can get a lot of learnings from there, as in which kind of a Facebook post is getting good number of likes, maximum number of shares, and good number of comments. What people, uh, you know, what the major commentators are talking about, what they liked and what they didn't like. So I've seen a lot in the uh, politics, uh, political industry, where majority of the politicians, they try to learn from each other. So there was this one of the camp, okay, it's not good to talk about uh, specific politicians, I won't name them, but there was uh, a lot of learnings which, uh, you know, the biggest campaign done by Narendra Modi, he, uh, you know, there were a lot of learnings from the other politicians which were being implemented. Similar was with Barack Obama, so that was one of the, uh, greatest campaigns done so far, where learnings majorly were being done across by that agency from other politicians page. So instead of going ahead and burning your fingers, you need to, if you can really learn from other mistakes, that works the best, right? Okay, so talking furthermore about amplification, so which is the lead generation, how do we really generate more leads? So it's all about Amplifying your blog post, your your which is there onto your website, your content onto your website. You can have helpful tutorials, various resources like you've got you know white papers, you got podcasts, webinars to share across. Now these are various different content marketing tools, which uh, should be shared across to your audience either through emails, either through uh, you know the Facebook post, the tweets, and so forth. So that is something which should be done across on a regular basis. The, the frequency should be maintained across. Then also uh, retargeting is another thing. Now retargeting is precisely all about targeting those set of audience who have come into your website and haven't really taken an action. Retargeting and remarketing is precisely all about showing your marketing message, your, your brand message in the form of any sort of a media, whether it's through a video, whether it's through, uh, through a display ad or through a static uh, ad and so forth. And you get to show it across only to that audience who have visited your website recently. Now it's been seen and it's, uh, it's been observed that out of 100 people who come onto your website, uh, only 2% get, gets converted uh, on, on a daily basis. I mean, this is on an average basis. And rest of the 98 people who didn't get converted, they did several, you know, they do several things with your website. They do several interactions like they visit many web pages or many of them go ahead and add products to the cart if it's an e-commerce website. After adding the product to the cart, they go ahead and abandon it. Now, all of these people leave your website for several reasons. Either they're busy, they're, they have not really decided, or they've got caught up with some other work or so forth, or they didn't like the stuff, they jumped from the website. So in order to catch up on these 98% of the audience, 
retargeting works the best. This has absolutely works the best. Most of you would be knowing about it. Google also helps in doing the retargeting, uh, running the retargeting campaigns. And uh, you can target across people based on what were they doing on the website and so forth. So you can, uh, in, in Facebook, if we talk about, we have the ability of going ahead and creating a custom audience. The custom audience can be those who have visited our website uh, in the past and so forth, and we want to target them. Also, within the custom audience, uh, there is another way of creating a different audience, which is a lookalike audience. Whatever uh, audience I've got, on the basis of that, I can go ahead and target people of similar nature. That works precisely well. That's why I'm going to be showing you that across as we, in the second half, jump onto the practical side. So we can target across the lookalike audience. Now, if we talk uh, more from the organic side, that was precisely from the paid side. Now, talking about the organic side, you must have seen uh, another way of reaching out to your audience is through Facebook Live. Now, that is something which has, uh, which is a recent thing. So, uh, a year back, I got introduced in the uh, Western countries, the other nations, and uh, recently in India, if we talk about, I have been using it for the past three to four months. Uh, if you have a Facebook business page and it's a verified page, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it has a page with more than 25 likes to be precise, then you have the ability to go ahead and go live. So that's another way of going ahead and reaching out to your end audience. You can just turn the uh, camera on with your smartphone and uh, with your, I mean, you just need to go to your Facebook page first and uh, click on to go to Facebook Live and turn on the camera. That's it. So you can experiment with that, have a various, so many, many brands are doing it just for the purpose of uh, you know, have much more engagement and so forth. So we can have webinars, we can have, so like this kind of webinar can also go live if we want to, just to engage our audience and so forth. Also, we can experiment with posting outside business hours, uh, just to see if our audience is active on that, uh, at that given point of time or not. We can mix up the frequency. Again, this is all about permutation and combination and a lot of experimentation. We can try posting less often or sometimes we can try posting. So we can also try posting on the weekends, more on the weekends and less on the weekdays or vice versa, just to see where, uh, which particular recipe works the best for our audience. We can mix up the post types, the kind of posts, uh, what we try to put in across, either it can be more humorous or serious or educative in nature. We can test the post length. Uh, many a times, smaller post with lesser, num lesser characters works the best. And in many situations, it's the bigger informative content with uh, proper bulleting and proper paragraphs being there works the best. So there is no specific formula which we can say is there, that what number of character limit, uh, what timing works. So it keeps getting shuffled, it keeps getting changed. Totally depends upon how your audience is reacting to it, right? Also, I did talk about having, including the add the rate symbols, the add the rate tags to, of other pages or the profiles to whom you are applying across. So that those other pages or other profiles whom you are ta ta you know, tagging across, they get a notification, they get an intimation that yes, they have been addressed across and so forth. And also we can repost the popular post. That's another good feature another good tactic to be used. So if you feel that a specific post which doesn't have anything to do with uh, the dates and so forth, which can be posted again, uh, feel free to do that because uh, you know it would remind people uh, what the brand is. It will ultimately help in getting much more engagement. So it's a, it's a good thing to go ahead and repost the posts which have been popular. Also, you can pre-select the target audience to whom you want to, you know, boost across your uh, entire content and your advertisement. You can drive traffic from other sources too. Now, this is one great thing. You can run pay-per-click search ads. You can run display ads. And the landing pages of those can be your Facebook pages too. So if you are looking at, you know, encouraging more uh, fan, increasing your fan, fa fan base, 
not just running across Facebook ads or promoting across, uh, you know, maybe verbally uh, within your within your network. If it's if you're going on a bigger scale, you can go ahead and uh, promote it across with the help of the search advertisement. So the audience who precisely use across majorly the search engines and they uh, they're not very active on Facebook and so forth. Even they can connect this way. So you can you or you can go ahead and promote across your Facebook page with the help of email shootouts to your existing customer base. Many a times it happens that majority of your customers who have come onto your website have bought the product, but they are not connected with you on Facebook page. So it makes a lot of sense to send them across an email, just pushing across and talking about your Facebook business page and giving them an incentive that if you like our page, we'll send you such and such. It's kind of a freebie and so forth. Right. Also, you can embed across posts and videos onto your blog. So onto your blog, onto your website, there are certain widgets which can show live Facebook status updates. Whatever Facebook updates uh, are getting posted across onto your Facebook page, they also get shown across onto your face, onto your website and blog, so forth. So these are some organic reach tips. So the secret to Facebook success, if we talk about, is to be a member first. Understand the entire, uh, you know, uh, channel. What exactly it is? What are the different features?
good thank you all right so perfect i believe everybody can hear all right sound is there now okay sorry for that uh, two three minutes trouble guys okay so we were talking about the secret to facebook is to just be a member of that first and then become a marketer so i hope that's the best uh, way to actually move forward right now i was talking about facebook ads algorithm now this algorithm is something which keeps getting changed on a regular basis and it's absolutely a secret sauce kind of a thing which facebook doesn't disclose it to anybody if you try to find out what's the algorithm i mean you will not get the deeper insights into this what you will get to see uh, that it keeps getting changed on regular intervals the point the overall reason for change in algorithm is to make sure that the user base of facebook gets across the major value plus the algorithm was recently changed uh, with the objective of getting across much major facebook ad revenue now when we talk about uh, facebook ads algorithm uh, we first need to understand where do the followers really interact now this screen grab will actually tell you there are two ways there are two uh, places where the fans or the followers really interact either they can go ahead and type in across on the wall of the page that's one or the other one is in the comment section of every post now right now whatever these post either it's a facebook status update or the uh, or the uh, comment being done across by any other fan either on the wall or either on the comment section not every follower not every fan so let's say in this case it's uh, 15308 not all of those will actually get to see these uh, interactions or these post just because the edge algorithm targets only 1% of this particular number so less than 1% so less than 1% sees the post onto the page okay it's if you want to really go ahead and increase that number so let's say you are an advertiser and you want to increase that number you want to move that up from 1% uh, or you want to utilize that 1% fully make sure that you are interacting quite a lot with your fans and followers whosoever is sending across a message to you or whosoever or right, so i hope my screen is shared perfectly right it is or whosoever is uh, typing across onto your wall right so that's to do with the interaction and the exposure on which the algorithm is based upon also when it comes down to the advertisements it's basically the advertisement which move uh, which breaks that entire algorithm and makes your post visible across to more than 1% of the audience which have seen your uh, which can see your entire post it's been also seen that it works on the time decay process whatever status updates which have been done across on a facebook post it remains fresh onto the news feed of that 1% audience for a maximum of 3 hours that's the average the much older a specific post becomes it goes further down and the new update comes on to the top we have always seen that right also this this particular time period of 3 hours can actually move up if your facebook post are carrying across certain media whether it's a video whether it's a podcast whether it's some uh, you know pictures and so forth right also the algorithm like i told you totally works on the history of the interaction if you're working if you're really uh, you know interacting with good amount of audience that audience will get to see across your stuff on a regular basis and so forth this can improve with the help of advertisements and so forth now we're going to be looking at certain elements of a facebook page um, we can just look at the slides right now and then after that we'll take a break and uh, we'll look into that on on a live basis now elements of a facebook page are precisely these on to the top we've got the cover image i'll be showing you various different uh, ways through which through which we can have good high definition facebook uh, cover photographs 
which makes sense, which has got a message and which propels calls to action and so forth. So there are various resources, various tools which are available. The other element is the avatar image, which is the one which we always, which we also call as the profile pic, right? So there are certain dimensions to it. So uh, if we are not uh, good with designing and so forth, we do not have a designer. We've got all, we've got all these resource, resource crunches. Then there are certain tools and that two free tools, which I'm going to be showing you, which we can use and create across good, uh, you know, cover image uh, without spending any great amount of time and without spending any money on graphic designers and so forth. The other element is the engagement aspect, which precisely we can see from the how many likes uh, have come in for the page. And then comes in the navigation. The navigation as in it, uh, you know, the various different options which are there. We can go ahead and click onto the about us or there are photographs and several other any applications being connected to it. Right. So navigations and followers and so forth. So this is uh, a Facebook cheat sheet. If I talk about the cover photograph, if you still want to go ahead and, uh, you know, you're a designer, you know how to design across on certain designing platforms and you do know what you want to know about the dimensions you can always google that also otherwise there's the cheat sheet where uh, the pixel is 851 by 315 pixels uh, for the facebook cover pic and if you talk about the profile photograph it's 180 by 180 it's been said that this particular dimension which is 170 pixels All right, so it keeps happening uh, for a second or so. So 180 pixel by 180 pixel for the uh, profile photograph and 851 by 315 pixel for the, uh, for the Facebook cover pic. Now, with that being said, this particular portion, which is the common, which is common uh, on the cover pic and also on the profile pic, we should not pay a lot of emphasis on the cover pic for this dimension, you know, which will get hidden. It will get hidden 170 pixel by 170 pixel. It will get hidden across uh, in the Facebook cover pic. So it's not that important, but the other portion is absolutely. And when we talk about the photographs of the pictures, which needs to be shared across in the Facebook post, that is, 100 and 1200 and pixel by 1200 and pixel that's a recommended size 1200 by 1200 when it comes down to creating across a page it's all starts with uh, choosing across the page type all right i'll be showing you the practical implementation of how how do we create across a page and so forth when we get on to uh, creation of a page it starts with uh, the kind of business type are we a local business are we a company or an organization or are we a brand or a product or even an artist band or public figure? So we cannot, uh, if we, let's say we are not an artist band or a public figure, we cannot create, we cannot choose this option because they're always the identification proofs, which Facebook asks for. So till the time the identification proofs are not being given, we cannot use those options. Or if we are an entertainment brand or we are, uh, a community or a cause and so forth. Let's say we choose across a brand or a product. We do get certain subcategories on the choose for, whether it's a clothing brand or a cars and so forth. All right, so the next thing is the practical side, which I would, so it's, we would take it after the break. And the time right now, it's almost close to 2.10. So we can take a half an hour break and then jump back onto the practical side. All right, so let's connect at 240 sharp, okay? 30 minutes break, and uh, let's go forward with that. All right, perfect. So let's meet at 240, guys. Okay, perfect. I'm muting myself.
coming. All right, I resumed the recording. Let's get on to the second part, which is the practical stuff. Just give me a second. All right, so what I've done right now, I've shared across my browser and when it comes down to creating a Facebook page, all what you need to do is you need to log into your Facebook account. That's what you can do. And then click onto that drop down arrow button. All right. <clears throat> All right, so the drop down arrow button. Okay. Seems like it's not working. Right, so when you click onto the drop down. What we need to really look into is create pages. So this particular option will help us to build in our Facebook. All right, so there was a disconnection. So when I click the onto the create a page, When I click on to create a page, this is the option which I get. All right. All right, so I hope the audio is back now, right? Now with that, I did show you that there are several options which we get in terms of creating a page. Either we are a local, so we have to select which particular, which kind of a page do we really want to make across. Is it for a local business or a place or a company or an organization or an institution or if you are a brand or a product or cause or a community and so forth? All right. Uh, am I audible clearly? Am I audible properly? Uh, just let me know now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right, so let's try to put in across uh, an example over here. I am building it for, let's say a company or an organization. I can go ahead and select across the kind of organization for which I want to build across the web page. Now, in this, so let's say it's, uh, I'm choosing across a small business. I can, so there are many, so we do have consulting and business service company, computers and technology. Let's say it's a technology company which we are coming up with. And I say, uh, my company name is, I'm just taking a normal uh, name, you know, I'm just taking a name for myself. All right, so let's say website hosting packages, that's the name of my company. I I'm, go ahead and keep that. I click on to get started. Now it's gonna ask me for a lot of different things in terms of what is my company's profile all about, okay? So I do have 155 characters limit. I can type in that and then I can go ahead and put in across my website name as well, whatever. So I'm just putting across my website name. And then this particular option, which you're seeing over here, that's called a vanity URL. That's precisely the Facebook, uh, Facebook domain, you can say. So we can go ahead and keep across the name of our page. So facebook.com forward slash, let's say website. I put it across as website dot hosting dot packages, all right? Underscores are not allowed over here. Underscores are not allowed. Okay. Now let's say 
I type across website hosting packages is all right. Um, we can we can do that later on. So a description followed by the website URL and also followed with by the vanity URL. So this is called a vanity URL, which is precisely a domain on Facebook of yours page. Right. So for every Facebook page, there is a particular web address which we can pick and choose. We cannot really get rid of Facebook.com. That is something which will be there for sure. Now I have to see whether this one is available or not. <clears throat> when I click on to save info, it will tell me whether it's available or not available. Well, it was available. That's why I was able to get that across. Then comes in if I want to upload across a picture, a profile pic on my own, or I want to import from my website, I can do it whichever way I want to. Let's say I want to import it across from this particular website of mine. Okay, this is the image which it has grabbed across. I can go ahead and change it if I want to. I'm just choosing this one at this given point of time. <clears throat> also, do I want to add this page of mine into the favorite section? The favorite section comes in underneath the newsfeed tab on the left hand side. If I want to get across access to this page on a regular basis and I just want, you know, want the access to this page on a one single click. I can go ahead and put it across in the favorites. So let's say I put it into the favorites. <clears throat> That's how it will come across on the left hand side. Let me show you where exactly it will come. All right, so as you can see, news feed, messages, events, photographs, ads manager, and there are several other pages which have which I marked in favorites. As you can see, website hosting packages, which I created just now, that has come in the favorite section. Okay. Now the next thing is to go ahead and mention across the kind of audience which I want to target across for this page. My preferred page audience. This is precisely for Facebook purposes uh, to let Facebook know about that. So let's say my audience is. Precisely the audience which resides across in the Canada region. Okay, I cater to the audience which is there in Canada region. I mention across the name of the country. I can pinpoint also on the basis of <clears throat> a certain city, a certain state, or province, or something, even a specific. One second. Even a specific, uh, you know, zip code can be entered over here, and we can point that across. So let's say, all right. So, so let's say this is my zip code, which is for the Toronto region. I have selected this. You know, this is where my company is based out of in Canada, in Toronto. I put in across the zip code and automatically it has selected that particular section for which, uh, you know, for that specific zip code. Now I have the ability to go ahead and drop a pin also. So let's say my business is precisely not over here in this section, the center point. I want to take across as this, all right, at 409. I do drop in the pin and when I drop in the pin, can you see the radius targeting comes over here? I can mention that the audience which is residing within the one mile radius or within the, let's say furthermore, I can increase that also. From one mile, I can go on to, let's say now nine miles. So audience, people residing across within the nine, nine miles radius take from that specific central location, I want to target them. Also, I know my audience's uh, age group precisely is in between, let's say 25 to 45, okay? Now this can be used across for advertisement purpose also and for or from organic point of view, my page would be pushed more towards this set of audience. That's why we are mentioning over here. Now it includes men and women. Let's say I 
I get across 90% of my audience is men, so I'm, I'm making it as men. I'm just, you know, giving across an example. It can be more also. I mean, it can be different also. Then we have the interest section. I can go ahead and um, select my audience on the basis of the industry which they are in. So let's say people who are in the advertising industry, they're uh, majorly my audience. People who, are, who have liked across business as one of their interest category, who have liked across entrepreneurship as another their interest category, marketing as another one, online as another one. Underneath online, there would be several other. People who liked across, who like across, uh, let's say digital marketing, display marketing, and several other. So I can go ahead and select all of these. Web design, web development, web hosting, and so forth. Right? I can go ahead and select all of these. This would include across my audience. So I can be more, uh, I can target several furthermore. In terms of suggestions, I do have all of these, right? On the basis of medicine, people, home, agriculture, society, culture, technology also. So people who are interested in technology, people who are interested in, uh, let's say, mobile phones, smartphones, management, personal computer, and all of these. So I can go ahead and try and test out all of these. Like I did mention, it's going to be a lot of permutation and combination of a various different audience. So we are creating one set of audience right now over here. I'm going to give across a name to this entire audience, which I am, uh, which I'm defining. I'm defining a one certain, one certain group of audience, you know, an audience who, which is residing in this geographical location is in between the age group of this much to this much is within the gender. I mean, the gender is precisely male men and has got interest on this much on these all things. When it comes down to language, I, it's absolutely on me whether I want to put in across any language, point out any language, or I don't want to. Let's say English UK is one. I can even select across that sort of audience to speak French and that to in Canada, right? Also, we got let's say people who speak Punjabi and that too, and they have written it across in their profile. I go ahead and say that across my page is almost set up with all the basic stuff being mentioned across here. Now, when it comes down to adding a cover pic and a profile pic, I'll be just going ahead and showing you some of the tools. One of the greatest tools for creating across these cover pics, guys, is canva.com like i was telling you that I've, i'm going to tell you some of the tools which are free and uh, we do not need to invest in across our any any sort of money without uh, putting across any effort on or spending across any money on what do you say the graphic designer and so forth now over here now this is my canva account uh, which has got opened up i've created several you know designs from here I can now look into what I'm looking at. Am I looking at a Facebook post? Not really. I go further down. Okay, I can click onto plus more. And here it's, I'm gonna get across a lot of options. So is it a Facebook post, social media presentation and so forth? I'm looking for a Facebook cover pic. So you can see marketing materials, it's not here. Social media and email headers. Over here you can see it comes in Facebook poster, Facebook cover pic, all right? So I can go ahead and create across a Facebook cover pic by clicking on the same. And now several layout options are available for free. Some of them are paid also, but we can use across the uh, free version. So the ones which with the, with the dollar sign are paid, they're just a dollar each, one dollar or two dollars. So all of these are for money. Let me see if I've got the free ones. So over here, here you go. You can see the free version. Then we have got this one too. So let's say if I go ahead and pick up across this one, I can go ahead and make any edits to this, all right, the way I want to. So I'm just giving you an example.
let's say I want to go ahead and delete this. So I go ahead and put in across my web web URL. Okay, I'm just going to be quick onto this. All right, so we can do several other changes to it the way we want to. I can go ahead and now download this and then upload it across. So I can download it in a PNG format or a JPEG format. All right, so here you go. I've got it downloaded across onto my laptop. I can now further go back, add in a cover, pick upload from the desktop. I can go to the download section, something which I've got downloaded just now, something which I've downloaded just now. Look for that. Here you go. This is the one. I go ahead and open this. All right, so this is just a rough uh, kind of an idea in terms of how can we really, so it's not a great design which I've created across. Just to be quick, uh, on a quicker note, that's what I've done right now. Now similarly, we can create across using this tool, a profile pic, and also if I, in case I want to put across any photograph or images for my updates also, for my day-to-day -day updates, I can get a lot of options from here as well. So let's say a Facebook post, I can go ahead and click on that. So this is one resource. There are other tools also, which I'm gonna share with you in a while. Now let's say if I wanna, so as you can see, there are several others which are available for free. We can go ahead and put in across any sort of, whatever idea comes into your mind, you can go ahead and make changes and so forth. Okay. Now the other tool which I was talking about beside other than this is pagemoodoo.com. That's also helps in creation of Facebook cover photographs and several other different elements. Okay. So you can explore that one pretty easy to one, pretty easy to uh, work around it. Even it helps us to create, uh, you know, banners for the advertisements and so forth. For the Facebook ads, similar same is with the Canva.com. We can create across images for the Facebook ads purpose also, right? So for the Facebook ads, also we can create across. Another good, if you're looking at very amazing kind of an, uh, graphics, then there is this website which gives across for a certain price. That's called GraphicRiver.net. Let me share that. URL with you over the chat. So when you go on to Graphic River, you can get into the Facebook cover pics. So graphics and underneath graphics, you can get into All right, so I believe they have actually moved it to some other place. Let, so what we can do, we can just type in here, Facebook cover. All right, in the search icon, in the search bar. So here you can see there are several Facebook cover pics 
even we can be very specific in terms of Facebook topic, let's say for a website which I have, that's a yoga website, just to give you an example. Okay, they do not have anything related to yoga and uh, anything related to health industry. Okay, so it's not picking up, probably we might have to really get into it, get inside it and then see for it. So let's say I go ahead and show it. You see, so this is for twelve dollars, and there are like several bundles of cover picks which we can go ahead and change across again and again. Now, for that, for using these, we either need to hire across somebody who knows Photoshop who can edit these templates. So these are some templates. You know, these are editable templates. We can go ahead and edit across the the names and the overall images and so forth, the way we did with camera.com also. But so, uh, but the thing is why we're using this and why I'm showing you this is because it gives you a lot of various options, not just camera.com, it doesn't really restrict you to one of those. You can use several others. If you really want to make it very quick. I mean, if you've got a designer with you or you know designing yourself, then there's no boundary. You can absolutely go ahead and put in across a lot of stuff. All right, so these are some more. So. It's a bunch of lot of cover picks which have been created provided across over here. All right, so that's to do with the some of the elements of your page. Now let me get on to one of the existing web page and talk about several other stuff. So we do have an option of creating across an event. So if you are coming up with an event, we can create across a different property just the way we have Facebook page, we have a Facebook event which can be created across. We can choose in across, we can create across an event photograph again with the help of Canva, put in across the event name, the place where it's happening, the start date, end date and so forth. Once that's been done, we can, we have the ability to go ahead and invite across our friends. We can send invites to our friends who are Facebook friends uh, for this specific event. Same is to do with the page. So once I've got a page created across, I can send across invitations to my friends, right? So invite friends to this page. So all my friends would be shown across here and I can send them invitation. All right, so I'm closing this as of now. Another great thing is, all right, so there you go. I can go ahead and invite across people like this and so forth, okay. Now, as you can see over here, there is this add a button functionality, which is a call to action. If I want people to go ahead and just click onto a button and then make a phone call or get onto the contact us page, I have the call to action functionality. So let's say if somebody wants to just, uh, you know, call me up straight away, I go ahead and put in across a call now button. It will be shown across precisely on phones. So how it would look like on an iPhone and an Android, we can, excuse me, we can get to see the preview. I can put in across the phone number. So that's my phone number, which I can put it across. Now, if somebody goes ahead and clicks onto the call now button, automatically, automatically a call would go, but this will, the call would go only if this page gets opened up across from a mobile phone, okay? Now that's another thing. Let me go on to some other page which has already been created across. All right, so let's say something like this. So this is my page by the name of Digital Marketing Partshala. We've got a call now, call to action as call now, all right. So it's in, uh, we do provide across digital marketing training over here. What you can see, we've got content published over here and one of the content is pinned across. There you can see the pinning option, this pin bar. Now what this pin bar actually means is that if you have got certain post which you always want to stay onto the top, you want this post to stay onto the top, despite of the fact that you've got new post coming across. You know what happens whenever a new post comes in, a new status update comes in, the older one keeps going down, right? The older versions keeps going down, but if you do not want that to happen and you are looking for one great favorite post of yours, right? One of your favorite posts, you want to get that onto the top. 
what you can do is you can pin across that post or over here. So already a certain post has been pinned across. I can unpin it and I can pin across another one. The only way it's, a, it's pretty easy process. So let's say if you got a post, just click onto the drop down arrow button and click onto pin to top. So what will happen? The previous post will go down and this post will come up. And every time this will stay onto the top till the time I do not unpin it. Till the time I do not unpin it, it will not go, come down. The reason, the purpose behind having this functionality up is so that you can promote across a content always onto the top, which is favorite, uh, which you feel is, uh, you know, going to make a lot of impact. All right. So that's another great thing. Uh, also, it's better always to go ahead and collect across a lot of reviews from your audience. So whatever your customers have been, it makes sense to always collect across the reviews. We keep doing that across at Digital Marketing Partshala too. That's what we have done. All of, uh, so that's, that's, a, that's one of my training centers. So we make sure that uh, all of our, we, get, we, get a, we focus on getting across honest opinions and reviews from all our customers. Now that's another one plus. All right. Now what I'm going to show you is the insights tab. Now this is precisely to do with, okay, before insights, I want to show you another thing, which is a settings tab underneath the settings tab. We do have a functionality, which is called page roles. Now I am the admin of this page and the actual owner of this page. I can go ahead and give across admin authorities to other people also who can manage my page. Now there are various page roles. If I'm the admin, I can go ahead and make other people either the editor, moderator, advertiser, or an analyst. Now, these are various different admin roles. Every specific admin role has got certain powers which they've got access to. Admin has got the major superpowers in terms of major functionalities, what they can really uh, take care of. Editor has a bit less, moderator has much more lesser. Advertiser lesser than the moderator and all the up ones above on the top and analyst have got the least number of functionalities, least number of, uh, you know, access to the features. Let me show you which all features do they have. All right. So, okay. I've spoken about the cover photographs that's there. And daily moderation. Let me just jump. Okay. Here's the multiple admin straight up chart I've got for you. So the admin has got all the features with them. They can manage the page roles. They can edit the page and they can add apps. They can create and delete post, uh, delete post as the page. They can respond to and delete comments. They can send messages as the page. They can create ads, view insights, and also see who posted as a page. And then with editor, the very first role is not being provided to them. Similarly, moderator, has got limited number, advertiser analyst, analyst has got the least number and so forth. Okay. So that's with the admin roles. Also, we do have the ability in the settings tab to go ahead and put in across a restriction to the kind of people who can see uh, my page. You know, people who are deciding across in certain countries. Let's say country restrictions, as you can see, I can go ahead and edit this and I can mention across certain countries to whichever one I feel, you know, the maximum spam is coming across and so forth. If I am a global brand, then I do not need to put in across any country restriction. But if I want to hide my page uh, from people who are not poor, you know, uh, who, whom I don't want to show across my page, I can, I can put across the name of the country and so forth. All right, so these are some of the most uh, important aspects. All right. Uh, checking across on messages. I, if I want uh, anyone in my fan list to tag my page, my pictures, I can go ahead and enable that and do that. I can even put across restriction uh, to my page from the age perspective, right? If I have some uh, adult kind of a content, I do not want to show it to people underneath 18 years. I can mention that. So all those people 
who are underneath that age, they will never ever be able to see my page and so forth. Okay, these are various different options. And in case any at any given point of day, you think that you have created multiple pages for your same business, you can always go ahead and merge two pages. You can merge two duplicate pages. You just need to go ahead and uh, put in across a request. You just have to put in across a re uh, request by clicking on to merge pages and so forth. All right. If you want to post across in multiple languages, that's a new option. You can uh, put that also. You can get that also done. Now, these are the most uh, important aspects. Let me go ahead and uh, get into the inside section. The inside section precisely talks about the traffic which has come onto your page. So I can see it for the last seven days. I can see it for the last 28 days. And I can even go ahead and change the date range and so forth further. Now it shows me what sort of action, three actions have happened onto my page. 44 people actually viewed my page. I've got 149 new page likes. Uh, this is 3% lesser than to the similar uh, time frame, you know, pre prior to this. So if I'm using for 28 days, prior to these 28 days, you know, I've, I did receive across 3% more page likes. So it does provide across a comparison also. So there is always a comparison this way. I do get to see how many people uh, were able to see the post, 6,475 and so forth. And how many video views did I receive across and so forth. Now I can also go on to the likes tab and get to see how many likes did I receive across in the last, uh, let's say if I want to do it for a good number of period. Let's say from September 1st onwards, okay, as you can see, there's a decline. So there was a lot of filtration actually, which we guys did. You know, there were like a lot of uh, bot spam which came in and we then filtered out and removed that across. So that's the kind of a number which we have got in terms of the likes. It keeps went, it went up and went down. There were like a lot of unlikes which did happen unlikes are getting represented with a red bar. Also then we, when we talk about organic likes, this is precisely the likes which comes on its own. And when we talk about the paid likes, which comes across with the help of the paid advertisement and so forth. All right. I can get across more insights about my other page stuff by getting into the various nitty gritties of my insights. I'm just showing you the topmost level ones, which are very much uh, handy. All right. And, and useful across. Now, when we go into the publishing tools, we can see performance of each and every particular post, how every post did perform across in terms of the reach and also in terms of the clicks and actions. Clicks and actions are a submission of likes or comments and so forth. So let's say for this particular post, it did reach out to 349 people, 349 people saw that and nine people actually commented and liked on it. Similarly, this one 423 and 18 people liked and commented on it and so forth. So we can get to see the performance of every single post this way while getting by getting into the publishing tools. All right. Now the other one other thing which I want to talk about. That's okay. It's to do with the reach. Uh, well, it's a similar kind of a thing. How many people actually saw my post and so forth? Now, when I go to the people, I can get to see the overall bifurcation of the audience which have liked my page. I've got maximum likes from India and uh, city. If I talk about New Delhi and so forth, and people who are, uh, have got mentioned across or mentioned across their language as the United States, uh, English, the US, and so forth. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and use across my slides now. All right, so we spoke about having daily moderation, right? 
So it's always best to have uh, one single resource at least who work across dedicatedly on moderating the page, provided if there are like a lot of interactions happening across. If you're getting across email addresses of your uh, audience, do make sure that you keep a tap on them, collect them and add into your email marketing list. Also, if in case there is, there is no reply which goes back to the customers, there should be an escalation plan where the moderator should be responsible for it and so forth. All right, we spoke about this. Also, okay, talking about how do we schedule content for future. Let me share that part. All right, so when it comes down to scheduling content for future, I can go to my page section. As you can see, my vanity URL is also there for the page, right? It does have a specific, uh, you know, name of a domain being given across this. Now, when I want to type in across something and want to post it across for the future, just because I feel that I might not have time uh, every day to come over here and then type in across at one given certain day, uh, you know, of the entire month, I can post it, post updates for the entire 30 days and so forth. Let's say so if I've got a particular post, let's say I'm just doing uh, uh, showing you a dummy kind of a post which I am posting it for future. What I need to do, I need to Okay, I can add in uh, image and so forth. And then I need to click onto this drop down arrow button and need to click onto schedule. When I click onto schedule, I can mention the date for which I want to schedule it across. Maximum for nine, uh, for six months. For six months, it's possible to go ahead and schedule it across. So let's say I schedule it for 30th of October, 2016. And then I schedule it across. Now automatically, the date and the time which was being mentioned, this post will come up. Excuse me, right? The post will come up, come up automatically on its own. So that's to do with the post scheduling. And I've shown you the engagement part for every specific for every specific post, we do have the ability to go ahead and see the performance, right? When we get go into the backside, as in the insights, within the insights, we can see how each and every post is performing across. All right. Now let's get on to the Facebook paid ads, guys. The Facebook paid ads, the number one option which I want to show you is the boost post. Now boost post is an option which the admin or the other pay people who are managing the page get a cost. All right, so the boost is unavailable right now. Okay, if I log in from the other page, okay, so let me do it from the other one. Okay, so I'm logging into my other Facebook pay, uh, Facebook account to show you the advertisement part. There's some, uh, trouble with that particular Facebook ad account. All right. So I'm onto the back end of, uh, I'm onto the, uh, sorry, not the back end. I'm onto my another different profile. I'm going onto the advertisements. All right, so it's taking a bit of time. Just let me just uh, swap across and move on to this, our previous page itself. 
So precisely we get across, okay, I haven't really set up a payment method. That's why the boost post isn't available right now. We do get across a boost post functionality, uh, which is a click, which is precisely a button which comes up and the moment we go ahead and click onto that, it shows that if you will spend in this much amount of money, let's say three hundred dollars, you will be reaching out to these many number of people. Your post will go out to all these number of people, eighty-one thousand to one lakh fifty thousand. And if you spend in a cost less, which is hundred dollars less, two hundred dollars on these being spent, then you will get get your page post. Only this particular post will reach out to 53,900 to 1 lakh audience and so forth. So that's to do with the post uh, boosting of the page, boosting of the uh, page's post. If one single post has to be boosted across. Now another great feature when it comes down to creating a Facebook ad, guys, is the 80-20 percent rule. Anybody who's aware about this? Anybody who's aware about the 20 percent, 80-20 percent rule? with the Facebook ad. You can let me know with a yes or no. All right. Thanks, Archul and Stephen. Okay, I'll just talk about it, Shami. Okay, so what it says that whatever image you are setting up, absolutely, Gajin. Whatever image you are setting up, the text within that image should not be more than 20%. Now, how do you really get to know whether the text which you have entered, is that occupying 20% or 25% or 19%? Well, for checking that, there is a specific tool which Facebook provide, that's called the text overlay tool. So with the text overlay tool, you can just go ahead and type in across in Google, Facebook text overlay tool. You'll get this tool like this, it will ask you to end, upload across your image which you have decided which you have decided to use across for the Facebook ads. The moment you upload that across, it will automatically tell you whether this particular image is good to go, if it has uh, less than 20% of the text, or if it is more than 20%, it will automatically go ahead and mention that it is not good to go. All right, okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Stephen, for sharing that across. It's the uh, so Stephen has shared across the link uh, with regards to checking across the text overlay. All right. Now I was showing you the boost post option. Here you can see the boost post option is there. I can go ahead and click onto this, and it will give me options in terms of how much money would help me in reaching out to how many set of people, right? I can go ahead and put in across the audience. So as you can see, I've got several different audience guides which have been created across. I've named them as audience one, audience two, default audience, people who have liked my page, and so forth. I can mention the budget, and on the basis of budget, it tells me how many people will get to see my post, and so forth. All right. So let's say if I do it for 200 rupees and I want to show it to the audience who like my page and also who are their friends and so forth. Okay, I can go ahead and promote it and it will be shown across to 2,000 to 5,300 5, people. Now, do I want to split it across uh, in seven days, 14 days or just want to spend across this entire money which is 200 rupees in one day, I can let's say select across one day. All right, or I can select across seven days precisely. Okay, it, it says I need to have at least 40 rupees minimum per day. So I can select for one day, and I can go ahead and boost it across. All right, so once that's been done, I'll be able to see how has been the overall 
performance and so forth. So I can close it as of now. Now the other thing is going ahead and creating across an advertisement. When it comes down to creating an ad, we can go to the AdWords Manager, which is on the right hand side. Again, the, the drop down button for which uh, we clicked onto that when we were looking at creating a page, right? Similarly, if you are looking at creating a group, we would go ahead and use the same drop down button. And if you are looking at creating an ad, we can go ahead and click on to create AdWords. All right, so the text overlay tool also I'm showing you across. Oh, I wrote in test. So text overlay ad. All right. So if I've got an image, I can upload that across on the text overlay, which I was talking about. Okay, I don't think I've got an image right now to check. Okay, here's the image. I go ahead and upload that across. It says image text is okay. Image text is okay. I can go ahead and use this. All right, now I'm going back to the AdWords manager. What I did, I clicked onto that drop down button and clicked on to create AdWords. Now here are the various objectives guys, which, which are being provided across my Facebook. If I want to boost my post, which we just did, if I want to send out people to my website, precisely if I want to increase my conversion, so conversions can be like, uh, you know, form fill ups and so forth or uh, you know getting across sales onto my website or if i want to promote across my page which is my facebook page precisely if i want to get likes for my page or if i'm if i've got a mobile app i want to install i want ins installs of my app uh, or i need to in increase engagement for my app or i want people to reach out to my business or if i've got an event before which i want to raise attendance I can go ahead and even as an advertiser create across an offer which I can make people claim it over the Facebook itself. So that can be done. If my idea is to go ahead and increase brand awareness to get video views or promote across the product catalog, all of this can be done or collect leads. So all of these works really well. Let's try to uh, pick any one of these and the most uh, widely used one is increased conversions on your website. So let's try to do this increase conversions on your website. Now here you can see I can uh, pick across, choose across a name of my campaign. Let's say I put it across as, uh, you know, I'm looking at, let's say form fill ups. That's the name of my campaign. I'm just putting it across. I've given across a name to it. Now I can use across existing audience, which I've created in the past or I can put in across, I can create across a new audience of mine, okay? But prior to this, I can go ahead and set up conversions also. Now, conversions in the sense that if there is somebody who has come onto my landing page and has registered, has filled up a form, I want that to get tracked. So I can go ahead and set up a conversion. There is gonna be a specific pixel code which Facebook will give and that I have to paste it onto the thank you page. So let's click on to set up conversion or it says track conversion with standard events or track custom conversions. Let's try to do with the track conversion with standard events. Now, if somebody who views it across certain content or add to the cart, adds to the wish list, I mean, these are various things or somebody who has uh, you know, put in across their details. So there are various things which can be done across. I can, let's say, put in across, complete a registration. All right, so that pixel code has to be email, will be emailed across. Okay, they have changed that part. So let's say complete a registration and I click onto email pixel code. This, this is a pixel code which needs to be installed across 
in between the header section of the thank you page all right so either if we can do it ourselves or i we can go ahead and send it across to our developer wise writing across the email address of our developer over here i can go ahead and copy this and i can show you how do i really insert it onto my landing page or precisely the thank you page also so i'm opening across one of my landing pages which i create with the help of one of the landing page creation tool called insta page insta page.com is a great landing page creation tool i use it for most of my landing uh, pages which i create so i'm logging into this all right so i've already got certain pages okay this is my thank you page and this is my main landing page which i'm opening across i can open my thank you page and put in across the all right so i can go ahead and edit that across i can edit this page i'm just clicking onto this page to edit it further and put in across the pixel code so that it gets confirmed and whenever there is so this thank you page app precisely opens across when somebody comes onto my main landing page this is my landing main landing page and when somebody puts in across their name their email address the phone number clicks on to get course details then this thank you page opens up the moment this thank you page will open up facebook will count it as one conversion and how that's going to happen i am into my landing page and i am clicking onto the settings and going ahead and getting into the html or i can get into the conversion goals okay conversion goals is different over here i get into the html so you need to be sure of uh, the you know as in how html really works so already i've got a facebook conversion code right across here so i need to first of all go ahead and delete that one so as you can see it's in the header uh, that's what i have to do i i'm going ahead and copying this entire code and it has to be placed into the header section i've copied this and i'm placing it right across here once being done i go ahead and click on to done save it and i will take 24 to 48 hours for the changes to get reflected now this particular pixel code now will start working after 24 to 48 hours now that's been done right i go ahead and click on to done and that's it this was the one which i created so this will actually turn from red to green automatically once a complete registration gets done all right now once that uh, so this was one of the question i believe uh, most of you were asking how do we really track the conversion so automatically in the adwords manager which is like this we'll get to see the overall reporting on how much uh, conversions really came in what were the number of clicks which came in what was the number of impressions and so forth all right over here i've got certain other statistics in terms of how many links and clicks i got and so forth okay so moving back to the same advertisement which i was creating across i can go ahead and create across a new audience or the similar audience so the same audience which i created earlier which i just created a while back in front of you audience which is residing across in toronto region in between this much to this much level people who like this and so forth i can also go ahead and uh, all right so placement is a new stuff uh, if you want to show across your advertisements to the right set of audience at right time then go ahead and click on to automatic placements the next thing came comes in is the budget whatever daily budget you want to target across it's 800 indian rupees or whatever you want to put across as 
5,000 Indian rupees per day. And do you want to run across your ads continuously starting from date, starting today until the time 5,000 rupees gets uh, exhausted? Or do you want to set across a start and an end date and so forth? So let's say I can start it from 9th, which is today, and I can run it up till 31st of October. So it tells me if I'm going to spend across 5,000 per day and run it up till 31st of October starting today, I'm going to be end up spending 2,60,000 in 52 days and so forth. I can mention, I can give across a name to my this entire AdWords, this entire settings which I have done across. Let's say it's September 9th. I go ahead and click on to continue. And now the next thing it's going to be the ad format and the layout and so forth. I can put in across a series of pictures, two to 10 pictures, which can uh, be seen across as uh, scrollable images or videos. I can put across one single image. I can put across one single video or maybe a slideshow. Now these things are pretty new. Slideshow is a pretty new thing. Also, if we do not have uh, images with us, we can, which answer says how much uh, minimum amount I can use, 100 Indian rupees. 100 Indian rupees per day uh, is the minimum which uh, Facebook allows. All right, so that's to do with uh, Indian rupees and if it's uh, dollars, then it's $10 a day. Or if it's Indian rupees, it's 100 Indian rupees a day. If we do not have, uh, you know, a lot of good images with us, we can select, we can search for free stock images and then type in across. And then we can type in across our keyword. All right, so let's say if I've typed in digital marketing, I can pick and choose any of the image which I feel gels well with this. All right, so let's say this is the one. I'm going ahead with just one image as of now. I can go ahead and add that across and it fits in perfectly. Then the next thing is the preview of our advertisement in the Facebook newsfeed ad and also right hand ad side ad. So I did tell you that we do have the ability to uh, create across a Facebook newsfeed ad. That's how the newsfeed ad is really gonna look like. It hasn't been accompanied by content. Once I'll put in across content over here, it will come right over here. Then how my ad will look like in the Facebook feeds, Facebook right hand side ad will look like this. Also, it has got collaboration with Instagram since Facebook and Instagram are from the same parent company. So on Instagram, the ad is going to look like this and an audience network, it's going to look like this, right? So I can go ahead and put in across my headline. I can mention across whatever text I want to. And then also get into the call to action. So if I, if I want people to go ahead and click onto uh, my ad with the notion of booking across, let's say, uh, booking across something or contacting me or downloading something of a shopping or signing up or watch more or something. So that's up to me. It's going to be a small button which will come across onto the bottom, which will say uh, watch, watch more, whatever I've chosen across. Right. Something like this. All right. It comes as watch more, right? So that's up to me. And also we can have put in across our website URL, which is the landing page also. So I can put in my landing page, which is this all 
All right. Right. Hope it makes sense. So that's something which is an uh, all about putting across a Facebook advertisement up. Now another thing which I want to show you, which is a very interesting and targeting stuff with Facebook advertising. That's with the targeting that set of audience whose email addresses are with us. You know, uh, we can just show across our advertisements only to that set of audience who has purchased products from us and so forth. So we go into the create AdWords again or manage AdWords. Now I go into my advertisement account. All right, so this is the recent one which I created. And all right. Okay, just give me a second. I'm, I'm, so there has been a change over here with the, with the panel. All right, so once we get into the create a campaign. Okay, seems like it's uh, right not here. Some trouble with this particular platform, I believe. As I'm going back to the same kind of stuff, which stuff which is choosing across a specific objective. All right, so the audience creation comes in over here only. So we have to really get inside here only. So there has been a change. So I can go ahead and create across a custom audience on the basis of. my remarketing list and also my lookalike audience, which I told you. So when I click on to look like our audience, I can go ahead and target across those set of people which Facebook has and that represents the same characteristics to the ones which have already liked my page. So uh, there is no existing audience as such right now for this. Okay. All right, here you go. So as you can see right across here, it says create a list of people who have visited your website. So that's one. All right. Or create a list of or an in, or another custom audience who have engaged with your content onto Facebook. So we can go or maybe people who have 
downloaded my applications or if in case we have details of our customers we can put across the names and the email addresses of a customer in an excel sheet and upload that across or it has have integration with mailchimp which is an email platform email service platform we can connect it from here and automatically whenever there are people who have signing up onto our email list and getting added onto mailchimp they automatically get added here so that's one of the greatest features as you can see it's asking for uploading a csv or an excel file right we can go ahead and upload across a csv or a txt file which is a notepad file or we can even go ahead and copy and paste the email addresses also here so you can paste across email addresses people who are using those email addresses to log into their facebook pay facebook account only they will get to see our advertisement on their news feed and on so on their right hand side section so that is precisely very much laser targeting guys right so that's the beauty of facebook ads we have covered this part what do you really want to do with your ad how do you create it now there are various uh, cheat sheets available with uh, regards to getting your ads up the dimensions uh, from which what much pixel what amount of pixel to what amount of pixel where well, uh, it's there for different for the desktop versions and different for the other devices but they are very much responsive in nature we spoke about the targeting options we can de define across our audience on the basis of age gender interest interested relationship status education workplaces and so forth that's what we saw the biggest three are the location the age and the gender we saw saw that part we also talked about the interest targeting at the from the topic searches and the suggestions point of view and then we also talked about we can target people on the basis of education from where they have done education and their work and so forth and then i had just shown you that we can even target only that very set of audience whose database we have got with us or whose email addresses are automatically getting imported into mailchimp mailchimp being the email service provider so why would should we use uh, build across our custom audience it's precisely to uh, build much more followers and sell across our stuff to them and increase much more exposure so forth all right so in the end what i would like to say the last word is that facebook marketing it, it's always about being honest you need to be passionate about your product and need to be patient so online reputation and all of that stuff cannot get spilled across in a day's time and since everyone loves free stuff so make sure that you go ahead and incentivize them with uh, you know something or the other plus the measurability part is absolutely important whether you're measuring from the perspective of how many people filled up the form or how many people purchased your products and so forth so facebook does offer marketers a ready made environment with 200 million members and is a social network this social network provides tools for anyone to create a facebook presence public profiles are the best place to start with and whenever a user becomes a fan of your public profile it means that they have opted in to know more about your brand and facebook ads in the end if i talk about are the best ways to drive your fan engagement all right so that's from that's it from my end guys any questions you have feel free to put that across in the chat window so that i can go ahead and answer that respectively let me know with a yes or no any uh, questions guys are you doing all good any questions guys anshul alpesh amin are you good anuraj arpan arvind chetan gajend etown gaurav prapti arvind kit sagar sandesh shivami stephen team second half was great learned something new great thank you so much all right so i'm going to uh, so all right thank you stephen for your lovely feedback thank you and so i'm sorry we link facebook with other social sites uh but there are certain applications for that uh you can just type on uh, google you'll find it you know integrate facebook with twitter there are certain uh 
Shivami, uh, what do you say? Applications which will just confirm your username and password with your for your other social uh, websites. That's it. Arpan says, "Yep, yeah, very useful. Thanks, Nick. My pleasure." Anshul says, "Thanks so much. It was very useful. My pleasure, Anshul." And Stephen says, "Product catalog, something to do with product dynamic ads." Yes, that's and on the higher side. Yes, it's on the dynamic ads. That's correct. Our team, uh, computer and said, it "Was very useful session. Thanks, Nick." E Town says, "Thanks for a great session." Says E Town. Our editor says, "Useful and informative one. Thanks for a valuable time. Appreciate. It. Thank you, everybody, so much for a valuable time." I'm so uh, I'm going to hand it over to Gaurav, who's going to. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Nick. You know, uh, I think it was great, uh, and thanks to everyone for taking time out and you know uh, joining us today for the session. Uh, we do plan to continue with similar uh, sessions going forward. You know, and we look forward to receiving feedback from you on this session. You know, and also what you would want us to cover in the subsequent sessions. Uh, you know, uh, having said that, uh, thanks once again. You know, and have a great time and have a great weekend. Uh, please do uh, feel free to share your feedback individually with uh, myself, Rakesh, Alpesh, or Baskar. And uh, you know, thanks. Thanks once again. You know. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye, guys. Take care.